Hello, hello, and welcome to a little video on vertical translations of exponential functions. So we are looking at three exponential functions, h, s, and t. Now check it out. h is 2 to the power of x, which exists in s and in t. So let's write that um, in h of x form. So we're going to say that s of x, it took our original h of x, and has a plus 3 on the outside. Our t of x takes our original h of x and subtracts 3 from the outside. Now for number 2, what we did is we explored this on our calculators. So I'm going to sketch you a really rough graph for number 3 to show you how we did it. Now I cannot um, project both the calculator and the OneNote while I'm screen recording. So if you need some help with the calculators, um, I can show you that on your own, okay? So outside of this video. All right, so first I had us graph h of x, and it looked something like this, all right? Something like this, okay, loosely. Then I had you graph s of x, which was 2 to the power of x plus 3. When you graphed it, it ended up, ooh, right here. And it looked like s of x was moved up. So s of x moved up from h of x. Then I had us graph t of x, which was 2 to the power x minus 3. And it ended up down here. So we were able to conclude that t of x moved down from h of x. Now we continued from this. So first we just saw it like a picture. So we just see this graphed perfectly in our calculator. And then what we did is we actually explored the points um, algebraically. So let's do that next. Now when we move something up and down, please notice that our x's stay the same all over. The y's don't change. Uh, what? The x's don't change. The y's do. So in our calculator, that's what I did. I changed my y's by either adding or subtracting 3. So let's do the adding 3. 1 fourth plus 3, 13 over 4. 1 half plus 3, 7 over 2. 1 plus 3, 2 plus 3, 4 plus 3. Now let's subtract. All right, let's subtract 3 from both sides, uh, from t of x. All right, so 1 fourth minus 3 is negative 11 over 4. 1 half minus 3 is negative 5 over 2. 1 minus 3, 2 minus 3, and 4 minus 3. Perfect. So when we're using the table, we can quite literally see the graphs being made larger and smaller by 3. So let's write that down. For s, the y's got larger by 3. And for t, the y's got smaller by 3. So not only did we see that it moved up and down when we looked at the graph, we know exactly how much it moved up and down. For number 8, what we're doing is we're just rewriting it in another way. For s of x, we had a movement up, which changes our original x comma y to x comma y plus 3. Because that's quite literally what we said up here in number 7, they got larger by 3. And for t, our y's were subtracted by 3. They got smaller by 3. Now, what generalizations can we make? And we're ignoring this asymptote. So these vertical translations affect our domain and range. Our domain, whoops, our domain talks about our x's. Right? Domain's x's. And our range, whoops, Keep trying to change it to my pen, and it's not doing it. Come on, buddy. There we go. 
our range is our y's. So let's write down how it affects the x's and y's. For our domain, the vertical translations have no effect. Our x's didn't change at all. They stayed the same. And we saw that in this table, and we saw that on these points. We saw it even when we graphed it, and as you can see, nothing moved right and left. It just moved up and down. For the y's, on the other hand, the vertical translation either increased or decreased the value. Okay. If you have any questions about this or how to use the calculator, please let me know. I'm happy to show you what buttons to press on the calculator. Again, sorry technology is this way that I cannot screen record both at the same time. Maybe someday I'll figure it out, but today is not the day. Have a wonderful rest of whatever day it is for you. Bye.